Hi, welcome everyone, and welcome to the first edition of the EMEA, Jetson AI Labs. We are going to speak with two projects. One is the leukemia detection project made with the Jetson Nano, if I'm not wrong, Adam. And the other one is um, Hi Wonder Yet Max, and we have here Silvia from Japan, by the way. We also have Rafaelo from NVIDIA and Katia. Also Hi. 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 So let's get started with uh, with Silvia. Okay. So hi everyone. So glad to be here to introduce our robot in and our company to all of you. Our company is High Wonder and is a high tech enterprise engaged in research and development and sales us of the cutting edge AI robotics products. Our key focus development field includes the servo driver, machine vision, software system, and the motion algorithm. And we have robots powered by different platforms, such as the Microbit, Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Rose, and of course, the Jetson Nano. Um, there is a story starting from the 2020. We want to build an open source robot arm and open source platform with the AI vision and the deep learning aiming at helping more people to learn artificial intelligence knowledge and the robot kinematic algorithms. Therefore, we propose the JackMath robotic arm project. After many attempts, we finally decided to use the Jetson Nano platform with the high definition wide angle camera to realize the possibility of the robotic arm Yes, this is the Jack Mass. Our, um, there are many details in our page now. So in order to allow the developers to better realize their AI ideas, we enhance the scalability of Jack Mass to meet the development needs of different scenarios. So this is the background of Jack Mass. So let's come to the next part. Then we found the Jason Nano. Back on the Jason Nano's excellent computing power in operation roles, our robotic arm can perform real-time object recognition, auto-sorting, face recognition, and so on. With a high level of efficiency and flexibility, they also means that through this open source system, the user can inject his own creativity into this smart robotic arm. Now, I'm going to introduce the Jack Mass in more details. With the great effort invested into developing product that combines our equality technology and experiences with the most powerful AI development kit in the market. Mm, let me introduce the Jack Mass robotic arm. It's a product developed and devoted to markers students and the robot enthusiasts. So you may want to ask why develop robotic arm? A robotic arm is an important branch of robot ecosystem with more developers coming on board with progression of intelligent technology. The potential of the robotic arm application has become very significant. And as being part of the robotic arm community, we see the cross link between the educational robots and the industrial robots. By combining the different operating systems and the sensors, robotic arm can enrich the AI learning experiences and application, producing many surprising creativities and the results. So the next question is that why integrate AI vision with the robotic arm? Many robotic arm use basic sensors to is that still basic commands? Jackmas is equipped with a high definition wide angle camera, which empowers it with the AI vision to you to see. Once the Jackmas catch a target and the location, and through its sorry, and through its rapid building kinematics algorithm processing, it can execute autonomous tasks such as the objecting of such as the object sorting, staking. Uh, writing, drawing, understanding gestures, and so on. This is the reason why we combine the robotic arm with the AI vision. Then let's come to the next question. Why develop the robotic arm with the deep learning ability? You can see that most of the robotic arms in the market are actually programmed with the color recognition and the checking commands. 
However, we all know that a true AI robot arm should have the deep learn learning ability to, to run the complicating task. So with our embedding research and the development ability and boosted by Jason Nano, we are able to make the drug mass a true AI robotic arm. Fantastic pleasure and the wonderful product application entail many changes to the product design and the development. We confirm and overcome many challenges in pursuit for the perfection. So as Jack Mass released, it's another one of our pride and significant milestones now. So uh, there is a video of Jack Mass performance. Let's have a look. In recent years, there are more people learning AI technology and many interesting projects are emerging. Meanwhile, Jetson Nano has gained its popularity in the field of artificial intelligence. This is Jetmax, a true AI robotic arm powered by Jetson Nano. It supports deep learning, computer vision, and more. Featuring excellent performance, inexpensive, and user-friendly, Jetmax greatly enhances your learning experience on artificial intelligence technology and makes your AI creativity into reality. Developed to be a true AI robot, Jetmax is equipped with high-definition camera to gain computer vision. And with its deep learning ability, Jetmax can perceive and interact with its environment autonomously to perform tasks such as waste sorting, calculating, smart warehousing, object following, and spelling. Jetmax is fitted with three precision smart servos. Though smaller in size comparing to conventional industrial robot, Jetmax is capable of high accuracy and heavy payload. Using trajectory planning algorithm, Jetmax can maneuver accurately according to your program path. The makers are most excited about Jetmax because it is open source. This signifies everyone can be part of open community with ample resources. Controlling robot arm requires complex skills. However, Jetmax is super easy to use. With PC software, app, wireless handle and mouse, you can now control robotic arm at your fingertips. A wide range of end of arm tooling like vacuum gripper, small gripper, large gripper, electromagnet, hand holder, etc. are available to fit on Jetmax. We can do fun and innovative tasks like writing, gesture control, emotion recognition, food sorting, quality inspection. In addition to these, Jetmax features more expansion ports to enable user to add more sensor and modules to develop and expand more creative AI applications. With the sliding rail and vehicle chassis, the workspace of Jetmax can be further extended to unlock endless possibilities. Jetmax Robotic Arm is the perfect robot to start your learning journey towards AI technology and robotic world. You can set up Jetmax in simulated scenario to display your great ideas. After 10 months of extensive development and hard work, we are launching this project on Kickstarter and ready to manufacture Jetmax. Now we need your support. Back us up today and bring your artificial intelligence ideas into reality. Yes, Great. thank you. For nice video. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the watching. So, do you like the Jack Mask? Yes, of course. It's, it is an <laughs> amazing product. Oh, cool. Amazing, you, amazing product. You. Um, maybe maybe you have some questions that maybe you want to ask, Rafael or Katia. I, I'm going to start. So, so Silvia, how did you start with, with the project? How did you start it with, uh, with Jetmax? How, how was the Kickstarter process and, and this uh, complicated process of going to the market from, from a community? Um, uh, actually, firstly, the, the Jack Mass have a very good result on the Kickstarter. Yes, we have uh, over 100 um, backers. Um, we think this is the very excellent product and we want to know, uh, we want more lovers, robot lovers know the Jack Mass. So we think Kickstarter may be a good choice to do the, the marketing. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. And through the, the case data, many, many the Jack Mass backers receive it already and they have very good uh, review of it. And, and then they will share their, their experiences with their friends or others. So Jack Mass is a great welcome now, I think. In, because, and most of the more and more people are, are very interested in the Jason Nano. So Jack Mass has this special controller. That's why it is very welcome now. Yeah. Great. Any other questions, Katia Rafaelo? Yeah, uh, you mentioned that uh, it's an open source project, and uh, yes. I just wonder what is the process of contributing it. So anyone who wants can contribute. So what's how do you recruit these people who, who contribute? Well, we share many. We share the open source and the source code system image and the other um, other tasks in the GitHub. So we, we share it to the users so that the users can can learn it and develop their own ideas. And for example, one of our users want to add other language into the Jackson Nano. So we, we provide this the, uh, this kind of robotic arm to them and kind of platform, and they can add their ideas and their other creativity into the Jackson Nano because the. The controller is Jackson Nano, so it supports many other language, the program and programming languages. So yes, I think this is the one of way we support them. Now you mentioned different programming languages. So what is the programming language your platform is implemented? Um, our providing source code is in Python, but mm-hmm. it also uh, support the C languages, but we didn't provide the source code about the C language, but this part the users can develop by themselves because you know that the users have many ability. They can add their ideas in there. Sounds yes. good, sounds good. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> uh, well, yes, there is one about how you can drive uh, the manipulator if you can use uh, ROS platform or other open source platform uh, and how you, uh, the developers uh, can use uh, uh, NVIDIA in the NVIDIA uh, trainer system uh, like Tao or other platform uh, for the robot to train and, your, uh, and train and detect uh, new stuff uh, on the environment like your video? Yes. Um, many, many the environment in our videos are just for the demo for their uh, to, to, to let the users know there are many tasks the robotic arm can do, but not only this, they can add any others. Um, one of our, yes, one of our, uh, our users, uh, mm-hmm. he buy our Jack mask. He, he liked the demo, he liked the games in the demo, but he has other ideas. So he emailed me, can, can I add, add other demo into the Jack mask? And of course, it support. Our demo is just for, for let you know there are many, uh, endless creativity. Yeah, just like this, but you can add many others. And the uh, yeah. last question was uh, about uh, ROS, the Open Robotics uh, platform. So the framework, if uh, the people can drive on, uh, on ROS. Yes, it supports ROS. Okay. Another question, are you working with the uh, universities to use this as an educational robot? Yeah, most of these university they they set up uh, lessons for the robotic arm and they are learning. Firstly, most of them use the Raspberry Pi, but now I found that more and more school using the uh, Jason Nano because Jason Nano is suitable for the university and most of the teachers can can set up more lessons based on the Jack Mass. So uh, they they set up the lab, the robot lab with the Jack Mass. Okay, good. Let's yeah. let's ask uh, let's ask uh, now to Adam because Adam also has a really interesting project. So hi Adam, nice to hi. nice to meet you from Nvidia. Your project is really interesting also because you are, you are dealing with leukemia and I read about the project. It was really really interesting. Maybe you can make us a, an introduction to the project. As uh, I've been introduced, my name is Adam Elton Barker. I'm the founder of the Peter Moss Leukemia MedTech Research CIC, which is a community interest company. And Peter Moss was my grandfather 
who was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia in 2018. Um, and it was after an all clear blood test a month before um, he was diagnosed terminal uh, with literally no warning signs. Um, I'm not a medical expert, but I did have experience with using artificial intelligence previously prior to that for breast cancer detection. And the project did quite well. I was working on that with as one of my projects with Intel. I'm an Intel software innovator and um, I did quite a bit of, uh, I went and demonstrated that project at various events. And uh, so I wanted to kind of see if I could use the experience that I made from that project um, to help with acute myeloid leukemia. Um, acute myeloid leukemia is very, very aggressive. And there's no known warning signs. Um, and I was convinced that in the blood test that my grandfather had the, uh, the month before that there must have been some signs there and possibly that AI could uh, help to identify that. Um, now we do have uh, uh, medical experts on our team. I do have to say that early detection of leukemia is something that research is working on around the globe. It's, it's not a solved issue. Um, we don't have any solutions for it yet. So it's a very, the overall goal of what we started to do is very hard. Um, it's not going to be something that just sort of happens overnight. But what we wanted to do at the time when uh, my grandfather was first diagnosed, we didn't have any medical expertise. Um, what we wanted to do was uh, try and use various different, as many different types of technologies as we could um, f uh, using computer vision to, uh, to try and detect um, early signs of leukemia, in, in, to be specific, acute myeloid leukemia. Um, so we continued with that um, around about two years uh, before my, my grandfather died in 2019. And in 2020, I decided to create a non-profit. I was living in Spain at this time um, because we could only really go so far without attracting medical experts um, and we knew this so we really wanted to uh, to really make a, a go at this so we uh, moved into becoming a non-profit based in spain and um, where we got, had a lot of progress and um, we worked with barcelona health hub and um, we started to attract and um, we'd been working already with attracting students that were joining us and and um, that really sort of helped them on their side. It was good for us as well, because we had a lot of experience, um, a little bit more experience into the medical side of things from their perspective. Um, and ultimately towards the end of uh, 2020, uh, 2021, sorry, we uh, actually had a, a doctor of hematology join us, um, which was really great. Um, I've actually moved back to the UK since then, and we haven't done a lot since I've been back. We've changed to a UK nonprofit, um, but I'm planning to sort of pick things up from where we, we left off uh, before I left Spain and, and move forward. So one of the projects that um, that, I, that I created last year was the, uh, the Jetson Nano Classifier. So, like I mentioned before, one of the things that we do is use lots of different technologies and really try to find, you know, what's the best way of uh, of detecting uh, acute, in this case, it's actually acute lymphoblastic leukemia because the open data sets for acute myeloid leukemia are pretty much non-existent. This is one of the reasons, another reason why we needed to create a non-profit um, to be able to you know make partnerships with hospitals and uh, and to be able to hopefully access data that will allow us to work on acute myeloid leukemia and um, so the jetson nano project that i made actually used acute lymphoblastic leukemia data um which is a little bit similar but it's it's mostly found in uh, in children it can be found in in elder people as well uh, but it's more commonly found in children um and that data set is one that we've actually worked with since the, the beginning, since 2018. That's by a, a guy called Fabio Scotti, who's an associate professor at the University of Milano. Um, and that's the data set that we've used. Now, with that data set, it's very small. And this is another problem that we find with the open source data sets that are related to leukemia. And um, so we had to use data augmentation and um, Ideally, I mean, we've been getting very good results equally with the Jetson project. 
um, but to really know how uh, effective these classifiers are, we need to be training on hundreds and hundreds of thousands of, uh, of images and uh, we just don't have the access to that at the moment. So that's been one of the biggest holdbacks. Um, we do have classifiers that range between 90, 92 to 98% accurate. But again, um, until we have access to the, the amount of data that we need to really evaluate the, the projects, we can't, you know, it's great the work that we've done. We've, we've been dedicated to, to doing this and we've published a lot of open source code on our GitHub. Um, but with regards to actually finding uh, some some way of, uh, of helping with early detection for le leukemia, we've still got quite a long way to go yet. Okay, so this, as it said there, it was my uh, AI Jackson specialist certification entry. Okay, so these are the slides of the, uh, the the data sets that we're using. I created a Docker so it was easy easy to install on Jetson Nano. And this is going through basically the, the notebook, the Jupyter notebook, which is available on our GitHub. It includes all the code for the augmentation and obviously training. So the left hand side is the computer that it was trained on and the right hand side is the Jetson Nano. Just to say the data set, you have to actually apply for the data set. It, it is free but you have to apply to to fabio scotty for that and the links are in the uh, in the github how many images are in this data set around it's been a while since i looked at it now there's just over a hundred if i remember rightly and we had to use data augmentation so part of the part of the the script in the notebook that you saw there does data augmentation and increases the images so the augmentation that we've used is actually something that i in my projects that i do with the in this research project i follow some augmentation processes that were used in in a research paper i do find them quite useful the problem with the data augmentation i tend to find is that in the real world the data isn't augmented so this is one area where, I, like I was saying before, one of the problems is that we don't have access to a lot of data to test it. I have a feeling that we really need, so to, to give a bit of example is, is when Google actually released an AI that had been trained for, for cancer detection, when they got it into the real world, it did terrible because the data was completely different to what the hospitals were using. This is another reason why we do get good results, but I really think that the, the, the key to this is, is finding the right data to work with. One of the, like I say with Google, the, the data was so different they had amazing results before they went into the hospital, but when they actually got into the hospital, the data was so different that it, it was terrible. So I think the data augmentation helps to, to show, you know, there's potential in this, but in the real world, I don't think it would help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to work in digital pathology myself, so I Did know. You? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just want to reiterate, I'm not a medical professional as well. So some of, some of the things on the medical side, I'm a little bit, but yeah, I'd be interested to talk to you. Um, it's been a while since we've done any, any work on the project since I've been back, moving back to the UK, but we're definitely hoping to, to get moving forward again. So I'd definitely be interested to talk to you. Adam, one question. Why did you start the non-profit in, in Spain? Why is because Spain? I, I was Spanish resident at the time. I okay. lived in Spain. I lived in a, a place called Sabadell. Um, which is about 45 minutes away from Barcelona. And during uh, COVID, I actually converted my house into the office for the Love. association. Basically had no furniture in the house. Everything was in the office, all my technology and everything. I really put a lot into, into it um, with complications of COVID and, and everything. Um, I returned to the UK and we changed to a UK nonprofit now. Yeah. It's a community what... interest company rather than a, uh, an association. I'm just, I'm just curious, how did you end up choosing Jetson Nano for this project? It's not a typical device for medical applications. Um, so I've got a lot of experience with embedded devices and um, I, apart from the GPUs, I didn't have much experience with, it, with NVIDIA. Um, I think it was through social media I saw an advert about the, the Jetson Nano. Um, and also I had a contact that was uh, that was connected to you guys as well. And I saw a lot of the, the promotion that she was doing and things like that. I got really interested in it. Um, I really love working with embedded devices. So uh, trying out the Jetson, Jetson Nano was a, a no-brainer. <laughs> Does it pose any challenges in you? 
I don't think so. A few problems getting software on there, but I worked through it. And uh, that's why, in the end, why I created the, the Docker, not through problems with the Nano, but through not having experience with using the Nano before and, and installing on there. But that's one of the reasons why I created the, the Docker so that other people could literally just download it and, and install it on there. Do, do you also train on Jetson? No, we didn't train. No, not on the Jetson Nano. It could possibly, because the data set is so small, it might possibly work on there. That might be my misunderstanding with the, with the Jetson Nano. I wasn't sure if it was to, to be used for training. I was under the impression that you shouldn't be training on there, but I, I can definitely try that. <laughs> yeah, that was my misunderstanding from the beginning. I kind of understood that you were training on Jetson Nano and that's why I was <laughs> really surprised. But uh, yeah, that's... No, I didn't train. I trained it on an NVIDIA GPU. It was a 1080 Ti, and I've trained it on a 1050 Ti as well. It'd be interesting to see if it could handle the uh, the, the the data set. Just about the data set, uh, I have a question. Uh, the hospitals uh, or uh, um, can help you to provide data set, or there are some way to uh, to improve the data set. Uh, it, it's very hard. So we've got a doctor of hematology that, that's part of our, uh, our, our non-profit and she's very pro, you know, getting this data out to researchers. She's kind of got her feet in both both sides of it, but there's so many restrictions, there's so many regulations. It, it is very, very, very hard to, to get access to the data. So there is possibly hospital, there will be hospitals that will be able to help us it's building the trust with those hospitals, building the relationships with those hospitals. In the case of the data that we used from Fabio Scotti, and this is something that very that I find quite a lot as well. He he lost somebody to leukemia and he wanted to do something. So he he spent his time creating this data set. And basically because of that, that was literally the only reason we were able to keep going since 2018. Because in the, the early days, it was literally, we weren't used to trying to find that data as well that made it harder. But that data set, that has really been the lifeline for, for a lot of our projects. What kind of labels does your data set have? Is it uh, pure classification labels or some segmentation masks in it? Classification and segmentation. Um, in the data set, we, we've mostly worked on classification, but the data set can be used for segmentation as well. And there's also somebody that's worked with that data set that's published some masks to GitHub one of our developers was working on that earlier last year so yeah you can use it for both there's two different types of data sets in it one of them is single cells and one of them are multiple cells mm -hmm. good so thank you very much adam and sylvia for your uh yeah for your presentation about your projects really amazing projects really inspiring yours adam so i hope you, you get really good results with the leukemia detection soon let us know if okay. you do something new with Jetson and we can have a, another interview maybe in the following months. And Sylvia, good luck with the High Wonder Yet Max. Looking forward to watch more uh, fun videos made by students or by, by yourself. I hope soon we can do a big collaboration with, with you two. Uh, yes, uh, we are going to release more uh, robots based on the Jetson Nano, yes. So I will share with you all when they are ready. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, everyone, thank you. and uh, see you in the next chapter. Thank you. See bye. you. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 bye.